Hey everyone, Luke here, and today we're going to talk about the sodium to potassium ratio on a hair test. Now it's important to realize the sodium to potassium ratio is the single most important ratio on a hair test, okay? The reason this is is because it indicates overall vitality, first of all, it indicates adrenal strength, and it also indicates a, it's a movement pattern. So what it indicates is if the oxidation rate is moving up or down, okay? So it means if we're, it looks like the body is making progress, okay? So that's the single most important thing to realize. So how we bounce it is actually using zinc, okay? Zinc or limb come in. Now what Dr. Eck discovered was that the sodium potassium ratio is the single most important way to gauge how much zinc someone needs. Okay, so most doctors and most lay people, when they look at a hair test, they see, for example, sodium's too high, right? So that means you're eating too much salt. Or they see the sodium's too low. That means you're not eating enough salt. That's no, nothing to do with how much salt you eat, really. What it is is an indication of vitality, like I said, a movement rate, the oxidation rate, and an overall um, adrenal strength. Okay, so let's talk about the body's first response to stress. Body's first response to stress is a high NAK. Okay, so if someone's if someone has a high NAK, that means they're exercising too much, they're worrying too much. There's some sort of stress to the body that's activating the adrenals chronically. Okay, so that's the body's first response to stress. Then what happens is as the body burns out, the NAK ratio lowers because what happens is the body can't sustain a high NAK ratio. So what happens is that the body then burns out and the adrenals become weakened. If someone burns out into slow oxidation or low NAK. And then what happens is sodium is lowered. So it's important to realize, so if we look at this, we see that someone's in burnout, okay? And then if we have a, a low NA is something we call basic burnout, okay? And that means just low sodium. So it's also a vitality indicator. The reasons why it's vitality indicator is because it's, um, we have to realize that our body is an electrical system. So for example, you know, when I squeeze my hand like this, my brain and my nervous system are actually sending impulses to my hand to squeeze shut, right? And that's like anything. So our bodies are electrical systems. And sodium potassium, sodium to potassium is very important for our electrical system. So every cell in your body has sodium potassium in it. So if you think of a cell, um, electrical energy is present in that cell. And sodium and potassium make up um, the cathode and the anode. So one's positive and one's negative and then they have to be in a certain ratio for electrical energy to flow efficiently, okay? So that's why it's a vitality indicator as well. Um, it's also important to realize as a, um, what it does is it indicates if the oxidation rate is increasing or decreasing. A high NAK means the oxidation rate is de uh, increasing, so it's a tendency for the oxidation rate to be increasing, and if it's low, that's a in indication of that the oxidation rate is lowering. So if you have slow oxidation, for example, and a low NAK, the low NAK indicates that you're moving in a slow oxi uh, slow oxidation, okay? You're moving, your, slow your oxidation rate is slowing down, and you're already in slow oxidation, that's a bad sign, right? Because you're already burnt out in slow oxidation, that the NAK is low, so that indicates that you're even lowering the oxidation rate even more, which means you're going more into burnout, okay? So if you're in slow oxidation and then you flip the NAK and then the, so on the for example on a retest the sodium goes up and all of a sudden your NA is above your K okay that's a good sign because that means even though you're in slow oxidation it's a tendency for the oxidation rate to be increasing which is a very good sign because if you're in slow oxidation you obviously want the oxidation rate to increase. So what Dr. Eck determined was that the best way to balance this ratio is using zinc. So the higher the NAK the more zinc we prescribe. So if Na was a little bit above K, we would just prescribe maybe with zinc like 111 or something like that. But if Na is way above K, you're going to need more zinc. You might need something like 222 zinc or 333, okay? You might need up to like, you know, 140 milligrams a day, okay? So that's important to realize. That's how you prescribe zinc. Now, if, if NaK is low, that means you need something called limb cumin because Dr. Eck realized that you can't, if your NaK is low, you can't just prescribe zinc. You need to you need to prescribe zinc along with copper, some manganese, chromium, and other things, so that because zinc is a bouncing mineral, okay, so it tends to bounce these out, okay. If you're trying to increase this, you need to give it you need to give zinc along with copper and a few other things, okay. Whereas if it's just high, if it's just high, you just need to prescribe zinc, 
And so if someone, like, just like with zinc, if someone has really high NAK, you need a lot of zinc. If someone has a really low NAK, they need a lot of limb cumin, okay? So like I said, in conclusion, limb cumin is used to raise the NAK ratio, zinc is used to lower it, okay? And if it's really low, you're gonna lose, a, you're gonna use more limb cumin, and if it's really high, you're gonna use more zinc, okay? So that's how you determine how much of each you need. Okay, so it's a vitality ratio, it indicates adrenal strength, it means um, the oxidation rate if it's increasing or decreasing, and it's the single most important ratio we can correct on a, um, on a hair test, okay? If you think of it like the um, rudder on a ship Dr. Wilson likes to talk about, okay? Just correcting this single ratio can get rid of a lot of problems, okay? So as we correct the ratio and balance the biochemistry of the body, you know, many conditions can go away at once because, you know, if the NAK is really low, like for instance one or lower it can mean a lot of things if NAK is a one or low it can mean someone um, has a lot of infections and they might have cancer um, there might be all kinds of things messed up with their body or if it's really high you know someone's under a lot of adrenal stress so as we just bounce this simple ratio um, it helps the body tremendously okay so I hope that helps you guys out and I'll talk to you guys later and remember you are love